Hello there, my Starklings. It is I, Stark Reality, and it is great to be back. Happy holidays! I thought it was time to get back into video making. Tis the season to be merry. Tis the season to create videos. <gasps> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What better way to do that than to share with you, my little starklings, one of my favorite Christmas time stories. If you've been paying attention to media at late, the amazing Illumination Animation Studios, the people who are behind such great classics as Despicable Me, Despicable Me 2, Minions, The Lorax, and <laughs> let's not forget Sing. I just loved Sing. I saw that at the cinema and I just remember how illuminating it was. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. I said it. It's true, but it was. But I'm not here today to talk about illumination. But if you've been paying attention, Illumination Animation Studios has released this year their version of The Grinch. I just love Dr. Seuss. I just love him. I had a friend who um, had a birthday, whose 21st birthday, they decided that they were going to have a Dr. Seuss themed birthday party. And we had to dress up as Dr. Seuss themed characters. And I just thought, oh my lord, that's just so many. There's just so many characters to choose from. And I just couldn't decide. I just, I, I, you know, I have a bit of a problem with indecision. You know, it's, it's one of my weaknesses. And I just, you know, Dr. Seuss has delivered us so many great all time classic characters. And I just had so many choices so many choices but i made the bold decision a decision no one else made that night i decided why dress up as a character when you could dress up as the creator himself that's right i dressed up as dr seuss himself it was very imaginative very creative and very very smart, just like Dr. Seuss himself. And he has delivered to each and every child in the world and grown up alike, one of the best Christmas stories. And of course, that story is about a little fella known as the Grinch. I wanted to read to you guys for this festive season, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. I thought it would just be a little bit of fun if I could grab out something from one of the greatest creators and share it with you. Because after all, every Christmas, I always whip it out, give it a read, and shed a tear. And since a new movie is out, revitalizing the story of yesteryear, I thought, why shouldn't I read the story itself? So, why don't you grab yourself a hot chocolate, put on a Christmas hat, sit by the fire, and listen to me and watch me read you one of the greatest Christmas stories ever told. Now, I've got a copy of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and I thought, let's dive in. Let's get Grinchy. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Hillville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas. The whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Classic Seuss. But whatever the reason, his heart or shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now, hanging a mistletoe. And there hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer, Tomorrow is Christmas, and it's 
practical here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early, they'd rush for their toys. <laughs> and then, oh the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's young and old would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. feast. Gluttony, such a sin. And they would feast on who pudding and where who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. <laughs> Typical Grinch. <laughs> and then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why? For 53 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? Mm -hmm. No. The Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. <laughs> I know just what to do. <laughs> the Grinch laughed in his throat. And then he made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat. Then he chuckled and clucked. <laughs> what a great grinchy trick! With this coat and this hat, I just look like Saint Nick. <laughs> then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. Then. He loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Ooh. All their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were dreaming sweet dreams without a care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claws hiss. And then he climbed the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little Who's stockings all hung in a row. These stockings! He grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant, around the whole room and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, and he snuffled them in bags. Then the Grinch nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one, up the chimbley. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. 
and the Grinch grabbed the tree. And he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. The Grinch who had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water, she stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus line. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side, so I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back down here. And his fib fooled the child. And then he patted her head and he got her drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log of their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in their house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same things to the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who still a bed, all the who still a snooze, when he picked up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings, 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mr. Crumpet. He rode his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo, poo to the hoos. He was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up and I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the hoos down in Hooville will cry boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. For every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't thought of before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little war. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day. He whizzed his load through the bright morning light and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch carved the roast beast. <sighs> Emotional. It always gets me that ending. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Just. Just wow, that was just so emotional of an ending, you know. It gets you right here, doesn't it? And I think that's what Christmas is all about, really. All the holidays in general. Depends what you celebrate. But this time of year really is to gather up together, put aside your own needs and goods, because the holidays isn't about capitalism. It isn't about consumerism or greed. It's about letting your heart accept love. Letting yourself 
grow as an individual. The holidays and the end of the year season is when you take time to reflect. You look back at the tribulations, the trials, the problems, the achievements of the year, and you learn from them. You grow from them and you love them, the good and the bad, because these are what make you my little starklings. These are what make you people. And isn't that really worth celebrating? Celebrating humanity, celebrating growth, celebrating one's self. And that's what it's all about, people. Have a merry, merry holiday season. Have a great new year, and I'll see you in the future. Mm.